Hi, I'm Chris Green, the History Chap, and I've always loved the stories from history, in particular military history, ever since I was a little lad when my dad used to take me around battlefields and castles. I hope you enjoy this particular story from British military history. Most of us have heard of the Vietnam War, the, the 20 year conflict that saw the USA fighting alongside the South Vietnamese against the communist North Vietnam. And over 58,000 American servicemen lost their lives in that conflict, along with countless thousands from their allies, not least South Vietnam, but also countries such as Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines. But one country, a traditional ally of the USA, was noticeable by its absence. The United Kingdom. Despite the urgings of President Johnson, who reportedly said that even a platoon of bagpipers would be sufficient, uh, the British, and in particular Prime Minister Harold Wilson, refused to budge. And so, Britain avoided the Vietnam War. Except that isn't entirely true. Because, believe it or not, the British were actually in Vietnam fighting Ho Chi Minh's communists long before the USA ever got involved. And they put the Viet Minh, the, the communist army, on the run. This often forgotten footnote to the end of World War II gets even more bizarre when it emerges that the British were actually assisted by Japanese forces that had surrendered to them only weeks before. This is the story of the British Vietnam War. The end of the Second World War in Asia was a lot more chaotic than we're probably led to believe back in school. Following the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima on the 6th of August 1945, and a few days later on Nagasaki, Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's unconditional surrender on the 15th of August. The challenge was that there were large parts of Asia still under Japanese control at that moment, not least the French colony of Indochina, comprising modern-day Cambodia, Laos and Vietnam. The Allies now needed to move into these areas to disarm the Japanese and to establish alternative administrations. Despite Vietnam being part of the French Empire, the French didn't have any forces close at hand, well, apart from those who were in Japanese prisoner of war camps in Vietnam. So it was decided by the Allies that the, the British, under Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten, Supreme Allied Commander of Southeast Asian Command, would oversee the surrender of the uh, Japanese in South Vietnam, whilst the Chinese would accept the surrender of the Japanese in the north of the country. The task of carrying out that surrender operation uh, was codenamed Operation Masterdom, and was given to Major General Douglas Gracie. Douglas Gracie was a 51-year-old officer from the British Indian Army, He'd seen service in both World War I, where he was awarded the Military Cross twice, and in World War II. He'd commanded the 20th Indian Division at the Battle of Impal. Operation Masterdom had three objectives. The first was to, re uh, to enforce the Japanese surrender, and then repatriate the 30,000 plus Japanese military who were currently in Vietnam. The second was to restore civil order until the French arrived. And the third was to provide humanitarian assistance to Allied prisoners of war and Allied internees. Mountbatten was clear that Vietnam was not being added to the British Empire, and he was actually very reticent actually about returning it to the French, believing that a new sort of post-colonial world order was dawning. But his hands were tied by previous wartime agreements. However, before Operation Masterdom swung into action, a spanner was thrown in the works in the form of Supreme Allied Commander US General Douglas MacArthur. MacArthur refused to let the British occupy Vietnam until he had received the formal surrender of the Japanese Empire aboard USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay on the 2nd of September. So this created a three-week power vacuum in Vietnam. Nationalists who wanted a new Vietnam free of French, of French control seized the moment. They took over public buildings and strategic infrastructures across the country. And in a serious piece of mischief making to thwart French ambitions to reassert their control, the Japanese stood aside and in some cases opened munition stores to the nationalists to arm their nationalists. And amongst the nationalists were the communist Viet Minh led by Ho Chi Minh. 
In those weeks at the end of August, the Viet Minh not only seized key targets, but they ruthlessly eliminated non-communist Vietnamese nationalists too. On the 2nd of September 1945, the very day that General MacArthur received the formal Japanese surrender, Ho Chi Minh declared the independent Democratic Republic of Vietnam in Hanoi. Interestingly, seeing as hist the way history would play out, the declaration was actually modelled on the US Declaration of Independence. With the Japanese formal surrender taking place, Operation Masterdom could finally swing into action. Three days later, 5th of September, British medical personnel were parachuted into Vietnam to start looking after prisoners of war. And the following day, troops from the 80th Brigade of the 20th Indian Division started landing at Tan Son Not airfield outside Saigon modern-day Ho Chi Minh City. In 1945, India was still part of the British Empire, and the British Indian Army had a long history of active service. By 1945, it was the largest volunteer army in the world, with two and a half million men in uniform. It's often overlooked that this was almost the same amount of men in uniform that Britain had in her army at the end of World War II. Major General Gracie himself arrived on the 13th of September to assume command and was greeted by cheering civilians waving Union flags. But that honeymoon was not to last long. The situation he found on his arrival in Vietnam or in Saigon was an administrative mess. Nominally a French colony, but with no French troops or administration in place. A Japanese army that, following the surrender to MacArthur, didn't formally exist but had yet to lay down their arms in this part of Asia. And key positions and services in Saigon under the control of Ho Chi Minh's communist Viet Minh, who regularly cut off the electricity supplies to the city and were adamant the French were never going to come back. Gracie declared martial law and slowly his numerically superior forces started to ease Viet Minh troops out of key positions in Saigon. By the 23rd of September, Gracie was able to hand over most of the, uh, the city to French civil authorities. As part of this re-establishment of French control, he actually rearmed uh, 1,000 French prisoners of war who formed the 11th Colonial Regiment. Vietnamese nationalists, and not just the communist ones, were enraged by what they saw as Britain helping to reimpose French colonial rule. And on the night of the 24th, 25th of September, a nationalist mob ran amok through Saigon, killing over 150 French civilians. The next day, the Viet Minh attacked the Saigon market and then clashed with, British, with the British Indian Army at Tan Son Nut airfield, killing a Gurkha soldier whilst losing six of their own men. Mount Batten now had the war that he'd been trying to avoid in Vietnam, pitting British troops against nationalists on behalf of a French colonial regime. Further clashes occurred before a truce was brokered. Meanwhile, on the 5th of October, French wartime hero General Leclerc arrived to assume uh, command of the French forces. And in another strange, interesting twist to this story, the French military commander in this French colony would report to the British General Gracie, who actually commanded the majority of the troops on the ground. So here we have Leclerc with Gracie on the left, inspecting the British uh, Indian 20th Division. On the 10th of October, the truce finally broke down when the Viet Minh uh, launched a deadly attack on a party of British Army engineers. British reinforcements arrived in the form of the 32nd Indian Brigade under Brigadier Woodford and were sent into the troublesome northern suburbs of Saigon, a uh, heartland of Viet Minh uh, resistance. Nevertheless, with this serious nationalist communist insurrection, even the reinforcements weren't enough, and Gracie now enlisted the help of the Japanese soldiers who were still stationed in Vietnam. So, the former army of occupation was now helping the British restore the French Empire. They were fighting side by side with British soldiers whom their countrymen had been viciously fighting at Impal and through the Burmese jungles. It's amazing how history sometimes twists and turns. But, not all Japanese warmed to this slightly bizarre arrangement. Some deserted and joined the Viet Minh, ironically, who they too had been fighting during World War II, often training and leading them. In fact, there is one report of a former Japanese soldier leading a Viet Minh attack on a Japanese unit who were fighting alongside the British. 
On the 13th of October 1945, the Viet Minh once more attacked the main airfield outside Saigon, but were driven off and then pursued by Japanese forces. Whilst the Viet Minh were ultimately to become a highly skilled enemy, as the French and the US were to find out, at this time they were still in their infancy as an army, and they were up against a disciplined and experienced British Indian soldiers, adept at uh, jungle fighting, and also well-trained Japanese troops as well. By mid-October, they had lost 307 of their number killed by the British and over 200 killed by the Japanese. On the 17th of October, yet more British reinforcements, the 100th Brigade, arrived uh, and at the end of the month, Gracie formed a task force, actually called Gate Force, comprising of Indian infantry, artillery, armoured cars, together with some Japanese infantry. Gate Force's remit was to clear Saigon and the neighbouring areas outside of the city of the Viet Minh. The disciplined, well-equipped and experienced British Indian Army, together with air superiority, not least from Spitfires, enabled Gate Force to push the Communists away from Saigon. And in the following month, it, com it culminated with the legendary Gurkhas storming a Viet Minh fort using their fearsome Kokuri machete-style knives. By Christmas 1945, Gracie was in a position to finally turn the former troublesome northern suburbs of Saigon over to the French. Indeed, the situation had turned around so positively that the 32nd Indian Brigade were now withdrawn to the British colony of Malaya. On the 3rd of January 1946, the Viet Minh launched an all-night attack uh, on a British camp. But once more, British Indian Army experience, the training, the discipline proved vital. Over 100 Viet Minh died in a hail of machine gun crossfire. It was the last serious battle between the British and the Viet Minh. What remained of Ho Chi Minh's communist forces fled into the jungles where they avoided contact with the British forces. More French troops had arrived from Europe in December and on the 28th of January, just four months after arriving, Gracie felt that he could leave Vietnam safely in French hands. By the 30th of March 1946, the last British forces were embarking on a troop ship from Saigon back to India. The British had deployed 26,000 men and 2,500 vehicles in Operation Masterdom. They had cleared Saigon and the surrounding areas of the Viet Minh, killing 600 in the process for the loss of about 40 uh, British and Indian lives. The French and Japanese probably accounted for another 2,000 communist fighters for similar losses to the British. Gracie was to go on to become Commander-in-Chief of the Independent Pakistan Army from 1948 to 51, and died in 1964 back in England. Despite being put on the run by the British, the Viet Minh and the Communists were far from finished. By the end of 1946, they had regrouped in the north of the country and had launched an attack on the French in the city of Hanoi. What was to become the first Indochina War had started. It would end in defeat for the French, and the eventual involvement of the USA in the Vietnam War. The conflict was to cost over two million lives. It was to displace millions more refugees, many of whom settled in the USA, and ultimately led to the collapse of South Vietnam and the communists taking over the whole of the country. But for a tantalizing moment in 1945, 1946, right at the end of the Second World War, things could have been different. If there had been the political will in Britain to give Gracie the troops to finish the job, maybe, just maybe, the fledgling Viet Minh could have been completely defeated by the seasoned British Indian troops. And history would have turned out very differently. That, however, was not the case. And all we're left with is another what-if question from history and a little-known story that I hope has both surprised and entertained you. Britain's War in Vietnam. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel or become a patron and support my work. Until the next time, stay well and I hope to see you very, very soon.